Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's a Fluke 750A reference divider. This thing is really old. It's from 1968 or something like that. It was probably manufactured uh, over uh, so, some years. And uh, this thing is just resistors and resistors and switches. And of course, high precision of reference resistors. And uh, my unit was even calibrated in 1986. Can you imagine that? Really? So somebody still used it. <laughs> oh, that is crazy. What about that? 93. Okay, so it was in storage from 93 and until today where I got this fantastic unit. All right. So what can we do with a unit like this? And how is it working? Because what you can see here is all there is to talk about, really. We got input voltage from a power supply and this voltage don't need to be accurate. I mean, not super insanely crazy accurate at least. So let's just pretend you got 10 volt input. So you put your dial in 10 volt. And of course it's not exactly 10 volt, but about 10 volts, right? Then the idea is you can adjust on those two potentiometers here until you have exactly 10 volts inside this system. So there's a little divider system. So uh, that is where you calibrate for the input. And how are you doing that? Here comes the coolest, coolest thing about this unit. So you have a standard cell and a standard cell is a some sort, sort of a like a battery, an old timer battery, but you can't really discharge this thing. It is a high impedance uh, battery, but its voltage is very, very accurate and stable. All right. So this battery is about 1.018 and then the next three decimals they will be here so the idea is you put in a null detector and this is a voltmeter or an amp meter in like micro amps or even the finest finest instrument you can find because the current through this system will actually be your loading current for your standard cell. So you want a high impedance, super, super fine detector here. So the idea is you input your standard cell, you input your 10 volts, and then you dial for absolute zero on your null detector. Put this in where your battery voltage is. Fine, fine, adjust for the battery. Okay, so now your standard cell system is calibrated in some of the resistors in your resistor network. And on top of that, we have the input voltage. And in parallel with this, we have the output voltage dividers from that input voltage. So as long as the standard cell voltage and all this is calibrated and accurate, now the ratio from whatever voltage will be exactly what you want for the output voltage. I don't know, does this make sense or not? Maybe I should make a little drawing, but that is the whole idea of this unit. And of course you can't output a higher voltage than you have on your input. And then this is why it's very flexible the way that it's made. It's just a lot of extra resi uh, resistors in series with some tappings, bop, 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 all the way up to whatever you want. So 1000 in, and then you can of course take 1000 out. So here's a little block diagram of uh, <laughs> from the manual, uh, trying to uh, show what I just tried to explain. So let's look in the center of the graphics here. We have, uh, of course, the Fluke 750 reference divider. So we also see the uh, meter and under the meter, there is this uh, one volt standard cell. All right, so you can imagine if I input a voltage 
and then I dial in the uh, reference uh, voltage uh, into the uh, adjustments of the resistors, then the output voltage radi ratio and that output voltage will, will be a known factor because it is relative to the standard cell. So that is the sexy thing about this unit. So hopefully I will be able to demonstrate this uh, in a few minutes. And here on top of the units there will be the different voltage ratios can be fine adjusted so there's a little cover you can take away and access those screws without uh, the need of uh, opening the entire unit oops and here at the back of the unit this is also a signature of this spang from the fluke calibration service and we got some batteries they need to be replaced annually and they were last replaced in 86 so let's see what is inside here and i'm quite happy not to find any batteries in here there will be two six volts uh, dry cell batteries by the way <coughs> there is a funny smell in here let's try something funny so now i just input a power supply dc power supply about this voltage uh, so I'm trying to simulate a standard uh, cell and uh, if I connect this one I should be able to use this multimeter here as a null detector but it actually reads out the entire voltage so that is a little bit funny isn't it my idea is a little bit um, different I should be able to um, adjust this to zero so let's try and input another voltage and now it is working so what i've done is i take 10 volts select here and i have 10 volts input so now i just keep this one here i have a almost zero so the idea is if i dial this one oh yes exactly look at that and the idea is I should be able to dial this to a complete zero. So now I am in the millivolts range. I put this in, in the middle. So let's see if I... So this way it goes up. And this way it goes down. I need a little bit less. And, and if this is not enough, I should have done it this way and then dialed it. Oops. And then. Yeah, here we go. So the idea is now I have calibrated my null detector at my battery, my known voltage. So if this is correct and I did not use this adjustments right here so this 10 volt here so what do you think we have here on this output and this one is in 10 volt right and of course i got exactly 10 volts coming out <laughs> so of course it works so what happens if we take the output voltage and dial this down to five i get exactly five and the next one is 1.1 look at that so now i can generate accurate voltages all the way down to 0.5 and use this machine to calibrate all sorts of um yeah multimeters uh, readouts and uh, what not how cool is that uh, by the way i am also using um another power supply to supply the little relay and protection circuit so the whole idea about this is to pull uh, some read relays and this way my input and output will be connected and all that so in case you overload something it will save all the resistors so you don't blow up your fantastic unit so that is pretty smart so let's look a little bit inside let me get up a little bit here so we can see everything in the same view. It is just 
out of this world, obviously. So we got all those fancy smancy resistors down here. And that's of course for the standard cell adjustments. And look at those resistors. They are of course the famous fluke resistors. They are 0.01%. Some of them. I also find one some 0.0 or something else. But they are really really good with temperature drift and all that and we got a lot of them i'm very happy they are not broken or anything like that because they are very very expensive to replace um, even today to get resistors this accurate with uh, at those exact uh, values and all that so that could be a big big challenge also um because of the voltages and the power and all that kind of stuff, they have also put all of the main power resistors inside this unit. And I think it is oil filled. And this one, this has of course um, some advantages that all the resistors, they have exactly the same temperature. And then there is probably some that's not so important and they're maybe adjusting something. And also see here, do not adjust unless seal leaks. So I don't understand exactly that adjust. I mean, really? So fill hole screw should be finger tight plus a quarter turn. So there's something here. And there's a seal and a leak and you need to something, I don't know. I don't really, really don't want to open this because if there's some oil that goes out or something like that, or maybe there's some adjustments or anything, I really don't want to touch this because it's actually working. So I'm sorry, I am not going to tell you what is inside this one. It will remain a big, fantastic a mystery. And here we got the variable cali calibrate area where we of course got uh, some fixed uh, values and then some trimmers where we just fine tune some tiny little bits of the ratios. And uh, down here we have the protection board and we see those two little transistors in socket and they run off this plus minus six volt battery supply. And the whole idea here is to pull this little dual read relay and it's of course some fancy smancy i don't know if we can we not get any light down there here you go it's called read relay something and that is just to disconnect in case you pull too much uh, power through this unit oh yeah by the way this one can um, handle 1100 volts right so of course the main input output ratio uh, context look at that so the metal shaft here goes into a little piece of plastic and I'm very very lucky uh, it is cracked a little bit as you can see here but because of the low friction of the contacts I am just so so lucky they still rotate real nice and fine I should probably add a few drops of um, glue and there's maybe a way to unscrew here from the back see so I can pull this out and maintain the plastic bits here to make them real nice and fine. And of course the other one, this is the input switch. Again, you see it is also cracked. And that is definitely what needs a little bit of service. But of course you need to have this in plastic because there isn't enough safety distance to the little center things you can see here you can see those little metal things they go there and there's probably uh, there's probably more than a millimeter so it should be okay maybe but it's also the layer to the layer of the many contacts and they want good safe isolation distance so i'm quite happy about that 
good with safety and isolation and all that. So I think that is more or less all I wanted to show about my unit. Since it's working, well, there's not going to be a lot of uh, repairs or anything because it's uh, just fantastic the way it is. So yeah, thank you for watching. I hope to see you soon again. Bye bye.